Yo, what's good guys? Coach the Tech here. So today we got a pretty popular product to review right now. This is from a Razer. This is their Razer Chroma. Now quickly, just quick heads up about this product. So this is an addressable RGB controller. So what it's essentially gonna do is if you have the three pin ARGB connector, now you guys do remember, if you guys saw the video, I did review the deep cool uh, converter over here. Essentially what this did, this, this converted the ARGB into RGB. What it also did was you're not gonna actually get the ARGB effects, you would get the RGB effects. So this was the uh, deep cool converter that I basically reviewed. Now with the Chrome, essentially what it's supposed to do is, so again, the same thing, if you have a, an older motherboard that doesn't have an ARGB connector, or if you even have an ARGB connector on the motherboard and you don't, you don't like the software that you basically get with that motherboard, you're gonna use essentially the Chroma. The Chroma has its own built-in software, which I'm gonna show you guys in the review and we're gonna go over, go over that, all of that stuff. But basically like a cardboard box over here, um, pack, packaging, it is what it is. You got it on Amazon for like 40 bucks. You just take the adhesive out. I mean, there was like lines here. I thought it was supposed to be easier. Yes, we just, we just murk. All right. All right, so anyways, we just take it out. Anyway, packaging, okay, it's packaged very nice. All right, and then we have a booklet here. The booklet basically is an instructional guide. Uh, what to do and how to install everything very simple. We're gonna go over this in the video. We have a razor sticker over here Oh, man, I am feeling the packaging it's Very nice All right, so we have Molex for power Jeez, all right, so anyways we have all right, so let's go over this So this is Molex for power over here. This Molex connector is gonna be for power now This is gonna be the data cable You're gonna plug this in into the hub and then this end is gonna go into your USB 2.0 header on the motherboard That's it. That's the install process Of course, I'm gonna show you guys and this is the hub itself now I gotta say it's pretty big. It's pretty bulky uh, All right, so we have 3m ta tape over here. You could also you could also screw this hub over here as well. It has little cutouts for holes. Now, I wish they just gave us magnets here to make things simple, but as well, you have 3M tape to stick it and keep it moving from there. But anyways, now for connections, like I said, very, very simple, very self-explanatory. Power goes into here. Voila, this end is gonna go into your power supply, the Molex into your, from your power supply, the Molex connector. Voila, that goes in there. Now the data cable over here, you plug this in like that, one like this. And then the other side is gonna go on your motherboard USB 2. And that's it, that's all the power. And then you're gonna download the, uh, the Razer Chroma software, which we're gonna do. And then you're gonna get all the, uh, the colors and effects and all that stuff. Now this is gonna work essentially for your fans. I mean, the uh, uh, Razer's advertising for your fans. Uh, anything that's Chroma related, so fans, we have SSDs I saw, uh, uh, Razer keyboards, mice. Uh, anything else I might have missed, I'm gonna have you know the link. You could just go and check it out. But anyways, we have the logo over here, and I get like I said, it's pretty big. Now I do have fans here. I have the Intermax. What are they? HT. What's the name of these? The HT 120s. I want to say it's not, but the Intermax fans. I did review them. I'll have them as well. So essentially, what I just did here, just for demonstration purposes, just to show you guys. So we have everything which is listed here. Uh, was it one to three? as well as uh, four to six. Now, you could also daisy chain them, which I'm gonna show you guys in a second. I believe the software should still pick them up. I don't think you need, I'm not sure exactly, I gotta put it in the description how many, I, it might, you could use basically more than six fans with one hub, because you know if you're using 12 fans, I'm not, I think you could just daisy chain them and the hub and the software might still pick them up. But anyways, for instructions, it's very simple. So like I said, I just have fans here demonstrating. So we have a three pin ARGB, which is gonna, you're gonna line them up and you're just gonna put them in like that. Now, this is a three pin ARGB. Hopefully the camera picks it up. And then we pop it in. And next we're gonna keep going. We have six fans here. So we're just gonna connect them for the sake of this video. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna connect them all. And just to, you know, basically give you guys a demonstration how everything goes. So we're just lining them up to three. So, but if you have three fans, you obviously are just gonna stop. I'm putting it in the wrong way. Make sure the pins line up, guys. I am doing this kind of fast, so for me, all right. So that goes into here. Now we're gonna go into the other side and then via the software, everything should be picked up. And then we're gonna have here four. So make sure you go four through six. Again, make sure everything lines up. We're gonna connect them. And again, like I said, we're gonna keep going. Again, we're gonna go five, line up, put in. 
Lastly, number six fan, same thing, six. Make sure everything lines up and then make sure we connect them. And that's it. So the fans are all connected. Of course, you're gonna have to do a bunch of wire management since it's all like this. Now, like I said, the hub is pretty bulky, so you're gonna have to hide it somewhere. Uh, make sure you have some space in your case. Now, if you're using a micro ATX case, uh, I mean, find some space, man. But like I said, it is pretty bulky. Now, I mean, if we, what I was thinking is if we actually, I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not too sure exactly how much fans the software, the hub is gonna actually support. Maybe it's just gonna be six fans. And if you wanna use 12 fans, you would have to use an additional hub. Um, if, I mean, if we could daisy chain them, I'm not sure if I had more fans, if we daisy chain them, I'm not sure if the hub is gonna pick up. But anyways, now I am curious. Now the hub is also gonna give your own built-in effects with Razer Chroma. Now, if you are using fans that uh, don't have a controller built in or don't have a control which is provided or a hub which is provided, you, you essentially get the Razer Chroma. So you're gonna use the, all the ARGB Razer Chroma effects via via their software but now let's get into the software let's go all right guys so as you guys can see i have everything up and running so what i basically did here i know it's not the prettiest uh prettiest look but this is not for aesthetics this is for essentially just for you guys to understand how powerful razor chroma is and how wonderful and how amazing it actually is now if you are rocking these chinese rgb fans or if they're not even chinese rgb if they're just regular argb fans that have a three pin remember i showed you in the beginning of the unboxing they have to have a three pin argb connector it will work most likely with the razor chroma so basically what i have here is these are the lian Li st120 fans they do work with razor chroma i do have them hooked up also i just have just some chinese rgb light strips uh, right over there as well just have them in white just to stand out they also work now these light strips were when i reviewed the antec uh, fans they actually came with these light strips, so I just plugged them in. I daisy chained them. I'll show you guys what I basically did with the ports, and they work. And now these are the Intermax fans, the, um, the HF, I want to say, 120s, which I said I'm going to use in the beginning of the video. They also work. So this setup here basically does work, and we're going to go over the uh, configurations and everything you could do with Razor Chrome. I'm just giving you guys a breakdown. So yeah, if you want LED light strips, and there's plenty of things Razor Chrome supports. You have your SSDs, your, I think, AIO. So... I'm mostly gonna have you know whatever I missed in the description below. But basically, the rundown LED LED strips check, ST120 Lee and Lee's check, Intermax fans check. Again, if it supports a three pin, it will most likely work. Sometimes even most definitely. Now, if it's these Asia Horse fans or any fans that have that six port, uh, the six uh, what was it, the the six fan header that goes into the hub, they won't work. Now. Even if you're going to use the ARGB, um, the ARGB portion of it, the other wire that basically goes from the hub to the motherboard, and then when you plug it into the Razer Chroma, it won't work. I tried it. I put it in my socials as well. You guys could check it out. So those fans won't work. But anyways, let's quickly look at the website here. So what we have here, just again, everything, whatever I missed or any information that I want to add on, I'll put it in the description below. I don't want to make this video so long, guys. Just th remember, this is to help you out. I don't care about how it looks, but as long as you guys understand, that's the most important thing for me. Now, quickly, how many components can I connect to the controller, right? So remember, we're just talking about this controller is only for ARGB, for the color, so for the effects, for the LEDs, the RGB effects, not for fan speed, all right? Forget about the fan speed, it's just only for the RGB effects. So you can connect the multiple addressable RGB devices as long as the LED count does not, ex not exceed 80 on one port. Remember, there's six ports, right? So they're telling you here that it can't exceed 80 on one port or 240 in uh, a total, basically total. So these are LED counts. There are six addressable air, there are six addressable headers on the Razer Chrome addressable RGB controller, and you can daisy chain your ARGB devices. How uh, basically have more connect? Essentially, that's what I did. So basically, I just have a quick math here. So essentially, in this example, right, these fans, let's say, except LED strips, these fans do have 12 uh, LED counting. Your fans have 12 LEDs, LED count. Now you could you could essentially support up to 20 fans right so this is how basically the math we're doing the total so essentially but you have to know how many led counts you have to count your leds to know basically how many leds are in your fans or your rgb the rgb strips but anyways i will have the information here below for you guys to understand as well now the razor chroma the synapse app itself uh it's free once you buy the chroma the razor chroma hub it downloads the app automatically as long as you're connected to, to the internet now so this is basically the software we have chroma connect we have chroma studio chroma visual and feedback so essentially we'll go buy one 
one by one and we're trying to make this uh, quick. So uh, the visualizer, you know, it basically supports your apps, your games, your different profiles. So if you have like, um, let's see, the basically it gives you the whole rundown here. So your fans, you know, basically all of this stuff will be supported by this uh, visual visualizer. If we are going to the uh, essentially, so <clears throat> essentially this is the main profile. So when you have the fans and everything connected with and LED light strips. So we have here ports one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So essentially here it gives you port one. So that's the first port that you have. So if you have a fan or LED, so you click on this drop down and you basically select, do I have a LED strip or a fan? So you click on that. Now LED count, you could Google essentially uh, how many, you know, if you don't know, you could just Google it quickly. You know, how many, you know, Lee and Lee ST120, how many LED counts do they have? Basically how many LEDs do they have? And it'll basically tell you, or you could just count them manually. So in my case here, there are 12. Now also this little icon over here says detected LED 12. You may edit the number of LED manually if you detect, if basically if it's not the same amount. So you could do change it manually. And essentially this works for every port over here. And then for LED light strips, I have them here and I just manually, I count on them, you know, and I just manually put 20, uh, 24. So sometimes it detects the wrong number. You could always switch it. Next, lighting effects. Now here, essentially we could just turn everything off. Everything is off and uh, we could turn it back on, right? So these are global effects. Essentially what it does is sort of, this is for brightness, so I could lower brightness, right? Look at that, everything is, this is global. Everything is lowering it, right? Now I wish it wasn't a, uh, I wish it would just lower it automatically. I don't have to like let, you have to release of the click for it to work. It's kind of whack, but you could just do it like that. Now you could do it individualized, right? So let's go to port one. We could just lower the port one. So you see port one getting lowered. Now we, if you want, you could change port two, you could change port five, you could change port six. So basically customize as much as you want on how bright your LEDs could get. In this example, we'll just leave everything on max and all of that, we'll just use it. Now for quick effects, we have, let's say these are just the static colors. We could change them up, we could put green. Now all the colors, I like how it slowly changes the effects of the colors. Um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of colors. You could customize them. You can make custom colors. I don't know. You can make everything white if you want, you know, I mean, it's just great. It just gives you so much options, guys. You could like constantly play with this. You could go with like blue, you know, if you're just a static person, you could do that. Uh, there's different things. There's like this wave effect. Now I gotta say, I have one complaint with this wave effect is you can't slow down the the RGB speed in the quick effects section and advanced and then the advanced effects you can but in the quick for some reason I can't I could just change like the direction of the LEDs but I can't slow them down or basically you know speed them up and then we have switch off lighting so when your display is turned off it basically just turns off all the lights I mean that's pretty self-explanatory we have ambient awareness so for instance, if we go ambient colors and then here, it's basically the color you have in the background is basically going to be that color. Uh, next we have audio meter. So the audio that's playing from your monitor is going to basically like change colors and change effects, uh, breathing effects. Uh, let's go to random colors. You guys are going to see this is going to breathe and change colors, uh, spectrum cycle. We're going to see what this does is again, it's going to cycle through different colors. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Again, this is just linking all of them with quick effects. We have starlight, let's go to random. Let's go to, let's go to long. So it does all these cool little things. Uh, let's go to static, we did, and we did wave. Um, all right, let's go to chroma effects. Let's go to chroma studio. Now, <clears throat> this is where the fun begins. Now, this, I'm not really gonna get too specifically into the app and basically how the UI works. It's gonna be a very long video, but I'm just gonna give you guys a quick rundown. So basically here I just customize. So it tells you how many fans, basically this is, you see one, this is uh, port one, and then this is port two I have, and then three, four, five, and six. So this is basically the selector tool. I could select the LEDs here and I'm gonna show you guys to change colors. This is the pen tool. You could select them individually one by one. This is the, uh, what was this again? This is the bucket tool. You could just select it like this and then it's gonna be each fan and so on and so forth. And this is the quick selector tool. This is basically very similar to Photoshop. And essentially what I did here, I just did it in the lineup of how I have it. I mean, you could naturally, it's all gonna be like centered. It's usually when you get them, it's all center here. I just basically, I just, in my orientation, I have the fans here and the LED strips there. So I just did them like that. Now, let's say if I, let's say I'm doing static colors, breathing effects. Let's, for the sake of the example, we're just gonna do static. Let's say if I want these, right, to be blue, and then let's, let's, let's put it like this. I want this to be uh, yellow. 
All right, I'm gonna hit and you're gonna see these, the bottom colors, they're gonna be basically yellow and blue. I mean, you have that effect. If you want, I can make this, uh, let's make this what, green? I can make them green. Uh, with these, I could make, let's see with the LED light strips, I have them ported to that one port. So I have a daisy chain, right? So whatever I do here, they're gonna change. So let's say I want the LED strips red. They're gonna essentially, no, no, why is this? I, oops, I have them, no, no, no. This should be red, there you go, now they're red. So they go to red. Um, let's say if I want them in blue, they'll change blue. So they go to this, or, you see now they switch. Now, if you want the LED strips to work independent, independently, you can't daisy chain them. When you daisy chain them, they're gonna work off that one signal. So you, what you would have to do is you would have to put each, um, each um, LED strip into its, each port for it to be independent. But here they're not independent because they're daisy chain, so they'll follow each other. Let's, let's put them into a purple or pink. Now they're gonna be pink. Now the fans up in the front, we could change the colors as well. We can make them all green. I'm just selecting all the RGBs. I mean, you can you know naturally do it like this. You could select this part to be red and that part to be green. And then you could take the pen tool and then essentially like change each LED and you can make this yellow. And then you're gonna see <clears throat> that little part and the end should be yellow uh, if, if it was selected correctly. Or screw the pen tool, it's too annoying. We'll do it like this and we're gonna do yellow. Uh, I don't know how bright they are, it should be yellow. Um, but yeah, I mean, then we could just switch the effect. We could do breathing effect and we could just make these fans do random colors into breathing. And you're gonna see it basically pulsate breathing. Let's go fast. So it's gonna be breathing much faster. And then there you go, you have the breathing effect. And now these three fans, let's say if I want them to breathe too, I could just take a selection here, take them, and let's say I want them to breathe, do breathing effects too, and now they're gonna be breathing. You're gonna have those, and let's say I want the, um, let's say I want the wave for the LED strips. I will put it here on the color here and then my LED strips are gonna do their own thing. So I, I could have everything do its own thing essentially or I could have them all basically sync up and do, I mean, there's so many things. I mean, these fans I want, um, let's spectrum cycle and let's put them here and let's hit uh, fast. And then they're gonna go through their little spectrum cycle thing, these fans. So you could essentially have different, and remember, I'm using different fans here. I got Lee and Lee fans, I got Intermax fans. So you could change them up. As the most important thing is as long as it supports, as long as it's an ARGB three pin, it will work as you guys could see here. Now, if it doesn't work on your end, maybe they're not natively supported. I mean, there are uh, fans which they natively support, but these LED strips are just some, you know, Chinese RGB LED strips and they do work. So. I mean, it's trial and error for me, they work. That's why I'm demonstrating this to you guys. But I mean, look, there's different, there's so many different effects. And then we have this quick selector. We could select everything and they're gonna do its own uh, color of, I don't know, what, what you know, like breathing effects or whatever. Uh, we'll do everything and we'll do, let's say pattern. And they're gonna do, I guess they're gonna do a breathing effect or something like this. Right, so, I mean, there's so much, there's so much things here. They're doing a breathing effect. They're just doing a little slowly or spectrum cycle effect. Let's make them faster. So like I said, you can make them all be independent or you can make them all unisync. So whatever you guys want. At the end of the day, this Razor Chroma thing, honestly, is absolutely fuego, guys. It's 40 bucks. It's not that much. Like if you're getting these ARGB fans, these Chinese ARGB fans, and you know, I reviewed plenty of them and the mobile software is just completely trash. Those ASUS, the MSI, the Gigabyte, Spend 40 bucks, add this thing. It's gonna be absolutely fire. You guys are gonna love it. You guys play with it, select different colors, use your LED strips and so on and so forth, guys, to be honest. Now, the only one thing I gotta say, um, the cable management is gonna be a clutter. I really didn't ca cable management. Like I said, this is just for me more of a demonstration. So you guys could uh, essentially get more of an understanding of how it works, not very in the uh, aesthetic side. Let's, let's make this uh, like all change colors and whatnot effects but let me know what you guys think about the razor chroma i personally love it it's absolutely amazing um like i said if you're using these chinese rgb fans or just regular fans and you don't want to use the mobile software you definitely get this it's absolutely 
absolutely fire. But let me know what you guys think in the comments as always, guys. I'm Kosher Tech. I'm going to catch you cats next time. Deuces.